Hey Canucks fans, I guess we should talk about Oliver Ekman Larson. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take on one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Friday, October the 2nd. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. I have a new tie. My friend Erwin, my coworker who I've tweeted about before, he moved here eight years ago from Edmonton, is actually moving away to London, Ontario. He's promised me he will not become a Leafs fan, but he's moving with his wife and their two young kids. So it's his uh, last week next week. So in cleaning out his office, um, he, he found out he found this tie uh, that he hasn't worn because it's Canucks colors. And I uh, he gave it to me um, and I was happy to take it. So I think it looks pretty good. But uh, yeah, so add it to my GLCBC uh, collection. So I'm going to miss my buddy Irwin. But um, hopefully, I'll, uh, well, I know I'll have a chance to spend a couple of, um, you know, spend some time with him before he goes next week. And we've got to figure out um, how to transition his work stuff too. Okay, um, I started off by saying, I guess we should talk about Oliver Ekman Larson. And I say that almost facetiously because you might remember at the start of this week, I kind of mentioned him for about a minute at most. It was at the end of a video where I talked more about Henrik Lundqvist being bought out and could that be a could Vancouver be a destination for him and I talked about how Jake Vertanen how he um you know what's his value and I so I focused on Vertanen and Lundqvist and then I said I used basically spent a minute on Oliver Ekman Larson at the end of the video because it I, I think Elliot Friedman had just put it in his 31 thoughts and I didn't think admittedly that it was going to get much traction uh, not my video I mean I mean the whole Ekman Larson rumors to Vancouver because at that time, I didn't see how the Canucks would make it work. Seven more years at $8.25 million a year, given the cap, the Canucks cap situation. Well, I admit, and I'm happy to admit when I'm wrong, because it happens a lot, I completely misread that situation because it is a massive story. It has been a massive story in Vancouver over the past three days, especially the last 24 hours. Rick Dollywald talking about it. Thomas Drance talking about it. Pierre Lebrun talking about it. Darren Drager talking about it. Everyone's talking about it. So let's talk about it here, too. Oliver ekman Larson. Arizona Coyotes defenseman, Swedish, 29 years old. Like I said, seven more years on a contract that pays him $8.25 million a year, um, both in, I think, in salary and cap it. I think it's one of those ones where it's pretty equal. But regardless, the cap it is $8.25 million a year. We know the Canucks cap situation isn't great. We know that the Canucks are trying to move out money in terms of Sutter, Berchi, Erickson. We know that the Canucks, uh, whether it's buyouts or trading or or whatever it may be, we know that the Canucks uh, free agency um, situation is crazy with Markstrom, Toffoli, Tanev. I've talked about that extensively over the past few days, past few weeks. Then you got, uh, you're waiting then, or Vertan and Stitcher are waiting to find out what uh, their future holds. So there's all that. We I talked yesterday about can the Canucks recoup at least one draft pick in the in the first two rounds next week, and then all this is going to happen in the next week because the draft is on Wednesday Thursday, Thursday uh, sorry Tuesday and Wednesday, and then free agency opens up on Friday. So this is going to be a crazy week. I've been talking about how it's been four weeks now since the Canucks season ended and nothing is happening. Now nothing is happening meaning nothing finalized. But we've been hearing, and as I've been saying, I know negotiations are difficult, and it sounds like Jim Benning has been among the most busy GMs in the league, talking to every single team in the past month. Okay, so now all that's on the table, let's talk about this actual um, potential deal, or, or whatever it be. So Ekman Larson, um, interesting, he's got a 10-team no-trade uh, no trade list, so that means there's 20 other teams that he could go to. But then it's been reported and confirmed that really he only has interest in two teams, the Vancouver Canucks and the Boston Bruins. Now that's tricky uh, from a standpoint for Arizona because it, it, we've seen it with the Ryan Kessler situation many years ago in the mid-2015s, uh, 2016s, whenever it was, where obviously it really hampers a, a team's bargaining position and leverage when a player comes out and says, I only go to two or three teams. So if, if that's the case, and that's even if Ekman Larson, even if Arizona wants to trade Ekman Larson, then it's either Vancouver or Boston. I don't want to talk about Boston. I don't know their situation as well, but Vancouver, obviously a history with Swedish defensemen. Edler, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, a really good history with Swedish players, including uh, the Sedins, Naslin, and of course, Elias Pettersson now, Jacob Markstrom, and Vancouver, obviously, we think is the most beautiful city in North America. So all these things, and an up-and-coming team, obviously, with Pedersen, Hughes, Besser, Demko, Horvat, uh, JT Miller, all those guys. So the actual, I think, 99%, oh, I shouldn't say that, maybe 9 out of 10 players, who knows, but a, a majority of players would choose Vancouver er, over Arizona, all things being equal. Ekman Larson's play itself, um, most people say he's not like a true number one, 
but he's certainly a number two or number three. I think Harmon Dial said that as well. And, uh, you know, he's paid like a number one, obviously, but we don't need him necessarily to be a, our franchise defense. And we have one of those already in Quinn Hughes, but we do need him to be a solid two, three guy, a top pairing guy if we get him. And then it would set up our, our left side very nicely with Hughes, with Ekman Larson, and with a guy like Jack Rathbone or Ole Levy as a third on the left side. It's the right side I'm more concerned about. You only have Tyler Myers there and you don't know what's going to happen with Chris Tanev and Troy Stetcher. And then you could do, you know, Jordy Ben could move to the right. Um, Brogan Rafferty will give a shot, but that's a that's a lot weaker than the left side. But in Ekman Larson, you get someone who, in essence, would replace Edler once Edler goes on. Um, and Ekman Larson would only be 30. So maybe the next three, four, five years of that, some years would be okay. The last couple of years you might be worried about, but maybe you don't worry about that right now. You worry about winning in the next few years while Pedersen and Hughes are well cheap for one year or longer. And then and then us uh, going to be in the prime of their careers. So Ekman Larson ticks off the boxes when it comes to uh, penalty killer, power play, maybe second unit, obviously. And then just consistency. He's only missed a dozen games over six seasons, which is pretty amazing for a guy who logs such heavy minutes. Um, so uh, you don't have to sell me on Ekman Larson, the player himself. The cost, pretty prohibitive at $8.25 million cap hit especially for a team that can't do anything because they're trying to figure out their cap situation. So that part's the more intriguing part to me because like I said, you can't, don't have to sell me on the merits of, of what he can bring to a team, but does it make sense and, and will it hamper you going forward in a flat cap world? Will it hamper you going forward if the salary cap's not going up and you're trying to attract other free agents? Are, are we going to end up in this situation every single summer, especially next summer when it's time for new contracts for Elias Patterson and Quinn Hughes? And then the summer after that, it's Brock Besser. And then right after that, it's Horvat and Miller. So there's there's a series of all of our core players that are going to come up for contracts. And we don't want to be having this song and dance every single year. Oh, the Canucks got to move up money. The Canucks got to move up money. Although... Guys like Erickson, Sutter, Beagle, Roussel, they're all going to be coming off the books in the next one to three years. So that's the other tricky part I want to talk about is who do you trade away? Obviously, Arizona would have to take money back. They're in the in the landscape of the NHL right now, you simply can't trade away money without taking money back. So that's why, you know, Erickson, we know he's a $6 million cap hit for two years, next two years, but he's only $4 million in cash, $1 million next season, $3 million the season after that. So you're getting a uh, $12 million cap hit for $4 million in cash over two years for Erickson. And for a team like Arizona, who doesn't have a lot of money, but might have to get to a salary cap floor or at least fill their roster. That's a good option for them is, is Louis Erickson. And then he can still play, you know, middle to bottom six minutes for a team like that. Same with Brandon Sutter, he could play bottom six, but, um, you know, play a, a center role um, over there at Arizona. So the Canucks would have to, um, would obviously like to throw in or to trade away one of those two players to get rid of some money. And if the asking price is, as we've heard from Arizona, perhaps, perhaps it's a pick, a player and a prospect. Well, the player could be Erickson or Sutter, although that's not the most appealing thing I admit. Um, a pick, you'd have to move a future first round pick. We don't have one this year. A first or second round pick, maybe it's, maybe it's a 2021 first round pick. And then Jim Benning can, can work his butt off to try and recoup that another way. And then a prospect, um, I, I, I've heard Ole Ulevi's name from Rick Dollywell this morning. So maybe it's a Ulevi or a Lynn, um, as long as it's not a, his name doesn't start with Potkols and Hoglander or Rathbone. I think everyone else might be fair game. So there's a lot of things to think about, a lot of moving parts. Add it to the uncertainty and craziness of this past month. But yeah, uh, along with moving out money, along with tra trading, along with contracts, and along with recouping draft picks, now we can add this Oliver ekman Larson story into the mix and we will see what happens. So I've laid out a lot of things, a, a lot of factors, cost, his play, no trade, or the two teams he wants to go to, moving out money, trading, whatever it may be. I'd love to know what you think, Canucks fans. Do you think and do you want an Oliver ekman Larson done, a deal to be done, a deal that would bring him to the Vancouver Canucks? If no, why not? And if so, what do you think is it going to take to get him here? Let me know. Leave a comment below. I'd love to redirect and apply. I'll start to get more active in the, in the comment section once again, but please let me know your thoughts and subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Stay safe, stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. God bless and go Canucks go.